There are many different variations of this all-new Jeep Renegade, but I don't think I'm going out on a limb here when I say that this Trailhawk is the coolest one. That trail rated badge isn't just some meaningless decal. It indicates the more serious of two available four-wheel drive systems, plus a raised suspension, skid plates, tow hooks, all-terrain tires, and a full-size spare. Now, this isn't as capable as a Wrangler or even a Cherokee Trailhawk, but it can do some rut crawling and go places that none of its competitors would even dare to go. On the other hand, there are downsides to opting for the Trailhawk. It does dull the Renegade's surprisingly agile handling. It also makes the ride a bit of an adventure, even on mildly rough pavement. You gotta be prepared for a lot of this business. Then there's performance. The 2.4 liter, 180 horsepower, four cylinder and nine speed automatic offer nearly acceptable acceleration with front wheel drive. But if you load it up with four wheel drive and all that off-road equipment, it can only be described as one thing, slow. There's also a small turbocharged engine standard on the Sport and Latitude trims. It's only available with a six-speed manual, but it does get better fuel economy. Inside, the Renegade has generally acceptable interior materials given the twenty dollars to $32,000 price range. Now, this Uconnect touchscreen is one of two available sizes, and it's really one of the easiest to use interfaces on the market. It's also a little easier to reach than the same system in the Fiat 500X. And speaking of the mechanically related Fiat, this has the same sort of generous feature content and interior space. There is an abundance of leg room, especially if you get the optional eight-way power seats. And two people can fit reasonably comfortably in the back seat, as long as some tall jerk doesn't take all of their leg room. Unfortunately, there is no center armrest back there, and it doesn't recline. Cargo room is another story actually has less maximum cargo space than some compact hatchbacks, but at least it's boxy and generally useful. With the rear seat up, it's very narrow, not that deep, and with the full-size spare tire, you lose the handy underfloor storage that comes in some other trims, which is also where this thing would go. No, I'm not delivering a giant pizza. That is where you put the removable roof panels, which admittedly are kind of cool. So in terms of functionality, comfort, and performance, the Jeep Renegade and especially the Trailhawk leave a lot to be desired, especially compared to a Honda HRV, Mazda CX-3, and even a Subaru XV Crosstrek. But there is something besides off-road capability that this offers that those others cannot touch. It's personality. The Renegade is just dripping with character. There's the styling, the cool colors, the off-road cred, and then just a million little neat design details everywhere. There's a splash of mud instead of a red line, there's a topographical map on the upholstery, and then little Easter eggs everywhere. Since 1941 is all over the place, so is the iconic Jeep grille and headlight logo. There's a little Willis Jeep climbing up the windshield and there's also a Bigfoot on the back window. It's a little hard to find, but I guess that seems kind of appropriate. And my personal favorite, the little spider saying chow baby, as if it smuggled itself aboard the Renegade for its trip across the pond. Yep, this all-American Jeep is made in Italy. I wonder what George Patton would have to say about that. So yeah, a lot of this is kind of silly. It's also just harmless fun, and really that's a great way to sum up the Renegade. Sure, if you need a more sensible small SUV, there's plenty to choose from, not to mention hatchbacks and wagons. Even if this doesn't make the most sense, there's certainly a whole lot to love about it. Let us know what you think. Do you love it, or would you opt for a Honda HRV, a Mazda CX-3, or even the bigger Jeep Cherokee?